Right, we'll have a look a bit later. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, mysterious hand. <laughs> Hello, all of you little demons. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval themed format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes, you, the person who has finally gotten themselves a new lighting rig, bask in my shiny glory. Plus, it allows me to do this, which is my new favorite thing ever. Yep, enough of that. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we're talking about, thanks to some delayed Halloween shenanigans, a scary list today. We're talking about hilarious moments in otherwise disturbing horror or disturbing video games in general. And here's the thing, because as many of us know, the line between horror and comedy is a fine one, and what one person might wake up in a cold sweat from may leave other drenched in tears of laughter. It's all subjective, is what I'm trying to say. So let's Let's take a look at those moments that were, intentionally or not, just utterly hilarious. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight hilarious moments in otherwise disturbing video games. And you know the drill by now, say hi to me here in the live chat and pop your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. Now with that, let's get on with the list. Number 8. Mr. X Can't Fit Through Doors – Resident Evil 2 Remake So when it comes to Resident Evil, the supposed horror series is absolutely littered with banterous moments. From that incredible, and by that I mean dog dick, musical score moment that hits you upon entering the basement kitchen in Resident Evil 1's Dual Shock Director's Cut Edition, to a moment that jumped the shark so badly that it literally redefined the term to punching the boulder, this is a series that delivers horror and hilarity in equal measure. However, one of the most unintentionally hilarious moments in the franchise came from the almighty Resident Evil 2 remake, and more specifically, around the giant trench coat-wearing monster that is Mr. X. Now, in about 90% of his appearances, Mr. X is handled perfectly, showcasing an unstoppable wall of beef that will knock seven bells out of you in short order. In fact, he could probably take on <laughs> He could probably take on beef gates. Oh turn you into a Toby Carvery, mate. His stomping feet match the pace of your heart as he hunts you relentlessly throughout the experience, making for an enemy that can be genuinely terrifying in places. Now I say can be because sometimes he's a bit too polite for his own good. When the player reaches a safe room or an area containing a puzzle that requires some peace and time to think things through, Mr. X actually decides, against all logic, to just let you have a moment and will patiently wait outside for you or just storm off in a huff. Can you imagine that? He's waiting outside the clock tower puzzle and he's just kind of like, come, come on, come on, I just, I just want to punch your face in, come on, it's because he shot my hat off. You Bastard. It's hilarious to look at this paper mache faced monster considering charging in after you and then getting cold feet as he realizes that this would just be rude. Number 7. Feeding your enemies a dung pie. Dark Souls. So Dark Souls, as with many elements of its very being, is a title that swings wildly between being an utter horror show for some players and then being a situation that will leave others cackling with laughter. Once you rise to the challenge, also known as getting good, you'll stop taking relentless beatdowns from the game itself and become the one doling out the punishment. You'll start to read attacks, bait enemies, and even make bosses look like utter chumps. However, for some players, they don't just stop at turning the tables on the game, but look to utterly embarrass people however they can. Enter the dung pie, which I'm sure that James has just animated on top of my hands here, or just a, an emoji of a poop, it's the same sort of thing. The dung pie, ooh. Ooh, behold its stinky glory! Using this will turn you into a literal piece of <coughs> as well. Now, normally this item is pretty useless, and indeed it's actually questionable as to why the chosen undead looks to stuff their loincloths and furs with feces, but for the truly devilish, this piping hot poo pie is the source of some mucky mirth. If you see, the dung pie inflicts the toxic status, and that drains health at a rate that doctors, or indeed in my case, James Dows would define as being alarming. Why is my room blue? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And as such, it can become, in the right hands at least, a weapon that puts the ass into mass destruction. Enemies and even players can be downed in moments by a bit of old muck spraying and turn otherwise tense conflicts of timing and skill in what amounts to a bunch of apes flinging their feces at one another. Hilarious, but also truly disgusting. Make sure you wash your hands after this one. Number 6. Whips, Chains and Frogs Haunting Ground 
So after crawling through spider-infested caverns, being grabbed by the filthy undead, and obviously having more gore and viscera covered over you than even a 90s TV gunge-based show would deem acceptable, it's little wonder that some video game horror protagonists want to change their clothes from time to time. Yet in some cases, it's not just a case of letting their hair down, or indeed tying it up in a different style, but a full wardrobe revamp that can see some rather outlandish costumes grace our screens. And you don't get much more varied, sleazy, and weird than the get-ups found in Capcom's undersung horror gem, Haunting Grounds. By completing the game under certain time requirements and with certain ranks, the player can unlock a myriad of costumes for lead Fiona and her dog Huey. And some of them, as Huey would himself put it, are... Woof. First up, let's get the sexy stuff out of the way, and by that I mean that you can don Fiona in a bondage suit and a cowgirl costume respectively, both of which give her different attacks in the form of a whip and a gun, which is admittedly pretty cool. However, the real star of the show is the frog suit, which when you put it on not only gives you unlimited stamina, but also when you're standing still and crouched, she poses like a frog. I mean, winner, winner alert right here. Winner, winner, bing, 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 bing. We've done it, James. We've reached peak win. Unsurprisingly, watching Fiona pose like this when she's meant to be fighting for her life made me laugh so hard that I nearly croaked. Number five, messing with the pizza guy. Blair Witch. Now, as somebody who has worked in the fast food sector dealing with the worst type of people and also has done jobs cold calling people and that ugh, ugh, makes my skin crawl, combining both of those aspects is my idea of literal hell. So before we carry on with this entry, I want to give a shout out to the undersung hero, the people who work in the fast food industry, especially the pizza delivery people who don't judge me when I come in absolutely blasted off my ass at about 3am in the morning and order like some horrible concoction that they no, it's going to give me a bad tum tum the next day, but I still do it anyway. And yes, I did order seven dips. I like, I've got a very dry mouth. Where am I going with this again? Anyway, the point of this tangent is don't mess with those who make your food, especially those not getting a decent per hour payment. However, this is clearly not something that the protagonist of the recent Blair Witch game, Ellis, was taught because, with the player's help of course, he can end up prank calling a pizza delivery worker so much that it causes the poor lad to have something of a breakdown. After repeated calls to the worker at Donnie's Pizza, the frustrated fella will become so irate that he will threaten to come to wherever you are and shove a pizza right up your ass. But while it might be a humorous little moment and a little treat for players who spam the button over and over again, I think that the worker at Donnie's Pizza is going to be the one having the last laugh, because have you seen the creatures in those woods over there? No thank you, mate. It's rougher than a night's out in Gateshead in there. Woof. Number four, the hand cannon, Dead Space 2. Ah, the hand cannon, quite possibly my most favorite video game joke weapon, and say it with me, kids, of all time! God, that felt like a good one. Yes, you can keep your nemesis from Cave Story that ends up shooting ducks the more that it levels up. No, I'm not going to do the bit. This is the epitome of epic joke weapons, and one that doles out the gun pun-based punishment by the bloody truckload. Seeing Isaac Clarke wielding a giant foam finger and yelling bang bang and pew pew at enemies would have been enough of a hilarious moment in itself, but what really separates this silly weapon from the pack is that it is utterly devastating in terms of damage output you will tear through necromorphs like they were made of paper and turn even the scariest multi-limbed foe into a bin bag of offal in seconds. As soon as you unlock this weapon, which granted is only gotten after you've completed the game on the hardest difficulty setting hardcore mode, the entire tone of this game shifts forevermore. You have no aspect of fear left at all when you're walking around just going bang 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 pew 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 and annihilating anything in seconds. Admittedly, this was the least that the developers could do after putting us through one of the hardest video game challenges ever. Seriously, have you been through this difficulty mode? It is a nightmare. Number three, next time knock. Outlast. Now this one here is truly grim, actually. Like, it is the darkest of dark comedies, so uh, enjoy. So for those of you not in the know, Outlast is basically a heart attack in video game form, constantly assaulting the player with relentless amounts of violence and horror to the point where it's almost physically sickening. It's a title that challenges you at every turn with content that carries a not-so-subtle subtitle of how far are you prepared to go, and in places this game goes very, very far. 
For example, early on in this title, you'll stumble across a man who is, and yes, this is as disgusting as it sounds, having sex with a headless corpse. Now, this alone is like asking for a cup of coffee and getting a double shot of an espresso and then having a mango loco monster chaser. But then it gets even more insane because what happens next will make you laugh, if only out of sheer bewilderment. You see, the asylum patient who was defiling the corpse jumps to his feet and begins accusing you of being a sicko because you weren't invited to this and that you shouldn't be watching. Now, first off, pal, just for the record, didn't want to see what the hell it is you were doing here. And secondly, I would tell you to go and have a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror, but I'm pretty sure that you would try to defile that as well. You're a wrong un. Stop it. An utterly grim moment for sure, but one that is sure to make you laugh, maybe just at the sheer absurdity of this accusing asylum patient. Number two, finally getting a shotgun, Visage. In a world where we might never get to experience Hideo Kojima's take on Silent Hills, Visage is a horror title that looks to fill that almighty gap that was left when PT blew a hole in the horror market. And it does so rather impressively, might I add, offering up to the player some impressive setups and scares. But it's also a title not afraid to cut loose from time to time and embraces the horror slash comedy one-two punch with gusto. Now, at this point in time, it's been pretty well documented that you can find a Silent Hill 4 Easter egg in this game that then leads to a bizarre dance party, and that itself is utterly hilarious. But less is talked about the shotgun that you can find in this game, because that... Well, that is actually even funnier. If the player drags an almighty cross with them through one section of the game to use to bridge the gap in another, they will open a door to find something of a horror fan's wet dream. A glistening and gleaming shotgun, slayer of the undead and pump action pal. However, just as the doom music begins to kick in, quite literally in fact, the trigger is pulled and out pops a comedy pow sign. In that one moment, our hopes for apparent safety were dashed so expertly. Well done, sir. My, I, I doff my cap to you. And we were left just going, ha oh, ha, that's really good. And the developer's like, yeah, oh, we got you there. there. And then you're just there like, no, seriously, I could have used that. Oh God, oh God, I still gotta get through this game. You bastards. And number one, calling the emergency services, Simulacra. Now, in my opinion, when it comes to horror as a medium overall, there is nothing better than when it taps into our everyday real life situations and somehow twists them to make them intensely terrifying. In recent years, the rise and indeed over-reliance on technology has spawned a wealth of great horror projects, each turning devices that we use every single day against us in rather sinister ways. And you don't get much more sinister than Simulacra, an indie horror title that was released in 2017 and carries with it a truly disturbing premise. You see, in this scenario, you play a person who has just found a phone belonging to a woman called Anna. After witnessing a disturbing video message, you delve deeper into her phone to find out exactly what happened to her. As you can imagine, things get pretty dark pretty quickly, and soon you're seeing things that you really wish you hadn't in your quest to find the truth. Yet in amidst all of this terrifying psychological horror is a moment of sheer levity that will just leave you in stitches. Because here, if you call any of the emergency services, you'll be treated to an automated voice informing you that if you're being, I don't know, murdered or kidnapped, to just hold the line and an operator will be right with you. This is too painfully close to reality to be funny, yet at the same time is so utterly dark that you can't help but laugh at the sheer absurdity of it all. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight hilarious moments in truly disturbing video games. I hope that you enjoyed that. And please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. If you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work. And it'll be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. Even though in our real lives, things can get a bit dark and disturbing from time to time, never ever let the light within you get extinguished, my friend. Always treat yourself with love and respect respect because you deserve all of the best things in life and just go out there with love in your heart instead of hate and always try and respect yourself as much as your neighbor. Big love to you, my friend. Now go out there and absolutely smash it. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Peace.